We're thankful for your goodness, Lord. We bless your holy name. We're thankful for your goodness, Lord. We bless your holy name. We're thankful for your goodness, Lord. We bless your holy name. Bless the Lord. Thank God for today. Um, <clears throat> let's give God a nice one for prayer for this beautiful October <laughs> Sunday. First Sunday in October. Uh, God bless everyone. Uh, you know, cancer survivors. Woo, 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 woo. You know, all this cancer surviving going on. I know many people who have survived the cancers. And we thank God for just a beautiful day he's made. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful day. Thank we you. thank you for your glory, your majesty, your honor, <laughs> everything about who you are. And we thank you, Lord God, so much for just how excited you make us uh, bring our souls when you re reveal yourself and secrets that have been hidden to us, oh God. So we thank you, Lord God, for being the spirit of truth, allowing your spirit of truth, your comforter, your Holy Spirit uh, to come in and dwell and to be able to unveil the glory of what you want the world to know at this time and this hour in Jesus' name. Lord, let ears be open and hearts be in tuned to what is about to be released today, God. We glorify you. We pray, God, that, that those who are online today, as we do our streaming services because of our pandemic and the uh, and the quarantine that we're doing. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that they would share this broadcast, that your uh, message would go out far and wide so that people can just understand what your heart and what your spirit is saying. In Jesus' name we pray and give you glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gentlemen and ladies of Life Nation and supporters and followers and all those who are guests, uh, we are excited about what the Lord is sharing. I am a little bit, um, I'm a little bit spastic today because number one, God has brought another component of revelation based on the dream He's given us at the beginning of this series. We are, as you see in your broadcast uh, highlight titles, we are talking about um, the restorative search and rescue. That's what the Lord has put on us: restorative search and rescue. So God is doing some things. Uh, he is sharing some really amazing details based on the dream he's given to me and the revelation that he's expressed about this situation. Okay. Now, those of us who are here, you got to understand that, um, here you go. We can understand, just uh, set it up on my page. Okay. Thank you. Um, those who understand that we had this dream, God began to reveal things to us on um, September 20th regarding this dream. So if you go back and look on Life Nation, look back at our social media pages uh, from September 20th, you can get a full detail about what this dream is about. Because I don't have enough time today to share the dream over again in detail. I'm going to share snippets, but we'll get into the words today. Um, just as a real briefly, the dream was God had brought us through a storm, brought me through a storm. And after the storm, I landed in the town, in the edge of an HBCU. Uh, and as me and my team landed there after this, this horrendous storm, um, hail, wind, and all those different things, uh, we landed at a hardware store, like a mega hardware store. It was just like a superstore, all kind of goods and details for um, building and restoration and all those types of things. And in this dream, uh, there was a parking lot that was unpaved, which was very rare. We talked about that. And in the dream, there was a Caucasian female that was more on the weightier side who was very supportive of what we we're doing, but she was in a ragtag type of um, dressed. She wasn't very, you know, she looked like she was just almost like escaped from somewhere. And basically, that's what happened there. And at the end of it, uh, one of, towards the end of it, one of my colleagues uh, got swallowed up in quicksand after we made it through the storm. So 
as I woke up uh, from this dream, there was sun directly beaming into my eyes as I woke up, and God began to just reveal himself to me and showing that the Son of God has really enlightened me to what he wanted to share in this season. So we talked about restoration in, in, day, in the first part of this series, what that represented. Okay, now, um, um, last week, those who were here, we talked about the various details of storms, okay, and what storms represented, the 10 type of storms, and then the spiritual storm that God has given to us, okay, um, that he's showing us about that we're in a season. Now, we are in a season of a spiritual super storm. God is just, it's, it's happening, it's happening as we speak. You can deny it. You can politicize it if you want. You can do all kinds of things. Just try to be uh, to look on the, the surface of what God is of what's happening that God is allowing to happen this hour. But God is bringing storm that we are in, and we must understand the seasons and the time that we are in. Okay. Now there is uh, as I start today um, the third installation of this series. I want to start with the one scripture that God given us. Okay. Um, I read it last week, but I'm going to start off with it today, okay? Isaiah chapter 43, okay? Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read that out of the Living Bible, okay? I love the Living Bible. Very good. The Living Bible, Amplified, I like those too. Those are really good detailed Bibles to read from. Okay, now, Isaiah 43, But now the Lord who created you, O Israel, says, Do not be afraid of Look, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. Okay? Oh, my. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, oh my God, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Verse 3, and I'll stop there. It says, for I am the Lord, your God, your Savior, the Holy One of Israel, and look, I gave Egypt and Ethiopia and Seba, which is Indonesia, to Cyrus in exchange for your freedom as your ransom. Oh my, those were some very explicit words that God talked about through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is considered the Messianic prophet who prophesied, you know, basically the 66 uh, chapters of Isaiah represents the 66 books of the Bible, you know, the first 43 um, and the, re represent the Old Testament and the last 27 represent, you know, like New Testament or freedom and things like that. So that's a little exegesis on that. Yes, ma'am. 39. 39, excuse me, 39. 39 and 27. What? Praise God. Thank you for that correction. That's why we're a tag team. 39, 27. <clears throat> Forgive me for that. All right. Now, look at this here. The Lord began to really deal with me about verse 3 of this passage. For I am the Lord your God, your Savior, the Holy One of Israel. I gave Egypt and Ethiopia and Indonesia to Cyrus in exchange for freedom as your ransom. So we're not going to really get into Cyrus because I had a long discussion about that a couple, uh, several years ago and who that really represents. It does not represent the American presidency, okay? Just let you know, or any president of America. That is not any, you, you see people that will try to spiritualize uh, uh, American president as being Cyrus. That is categorically false. That is from hell. Okay, now what happens is here, the Lord began to speak to me and says that the nations represented in the scriptures, Egypt, 
Ethiopia, and Indonesia, they are brown-skinned nations. So God says that he's using brown-skinned nations as a form of ransom. Now, let's go a little deeper into it. We know we've all seen some kind of action movies, uh, spy movies, you know, 007 and all those things. And we've seen, you know, the, the theatrical version of Ransom, and we see that in movies, and that's not what we want to show because that's theatrics and that's cinema, okay? Ransom, several definitions I have um, that really go into what Ransom, God says, look up the word Ransom, get clarity on that. A ransom is a sum of money or other payment demanded or paid for the release of a prisoner. A sum of money or payment paid for the release of a prisoner. Okay? As you go down further into this term ransom, ransom means redemption. Ransom means reparations payment. <laughs> I'm like, what? Ah. <laughs> bum, 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 Pastor Shante says. <laughs> Resources given in exchange for people who have been imprisoned. God says, he spoke to me and said that he is using brown skin nations as a resource for the release of bondage for Israel, the holy nation from Africa. <laughs> as you've seen in our earlier studies and very details and through the Daring Dialogues broadcast through Prophet Shante and through our research, intelligent and very factual research, you will see that Israel, Jerusalem, is Northeast Africa. If I just kind of bring exchanges now, Ethi I mean, uh, not Ethiopia, but Egypt, Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, was hidden in Egypt. He was hidden in Egypt. Egypt in itself is a very big issue and I'm going to pause before I go into what Egypt means, okay? Uh, let's go further. The Lord began to speak to me and said that brown is one of the most valuable and productive colors on planet Earth. This is straight from the Holy Spirit. The Lord said to me, he said that without any brown there is no green. This is straight from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said the Creator Himself found Himself making treasure from the dirt, the brown, fertile dirt. Oh, why am I emphasizing brown, fertile dirt? Well, the Lord has spoke to me and said that Brown-skinned nations have been the architects and engineers, or conversely, apostles and prophets of humanity. 
-hmm. So, back to the dream. Said God said the reason why He showed me landing in the vicinity of an HBCU, which means historically black college and university, at a hardware store after a storm is him clearing the idols and superpowers oppression of the current age. The storm is to clear the idols, the doctrines of devils, the false religions, the, um, uh, the deceptions of society that misalign what the foundation of humanity represents. I'm like, oh my God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are telling me something. The Lord said, regardless of the damage done by satanic forces, the DNA of survival and of life is in brown skinned humans. Geneticists have uncovered this phenomenon, I'm not speaking from an identity of politics. I'm not speaking from a basis of religion. I'm speaking from science. Science catches up with what the truth of what the Holy Spirit and what God has done. Okay? Now, why does that have any significance to what I'm talking about? The Lord has spoken to me. That and, he, and this is something he really blew my mind with in this process of study. <sighs> the dark-skinned nation of Israel was held captive by Babylon. Isaiah 43, forgive me early for saying 43 uh, chapters of the Old Testament. I was kept thinking Isaiah 43, so my numbers got mixed up. It's 39 chapters in the Old Testament, so don't think I didn't know that. Okay, now, the Lord began to speak to me that the dark-skinned nations of Israel was held captive by Babylon. So, when God speaks and says that when you go through deep waters of great trouble, you won't drown. When you walk through the fires of oppression, you won't be burned up. The flames won't consume you. And God spoke to me and said that when you look at Egypt, Ethiopia, and Indonesia, the brown-skinned nations, those are being used as a resource for the uh, freedom of the children of Israel. Now God says, what is Babylon? Babylon, physically speaking, was, is the land of Iraq. Mm -hmm. Babylon, spiritually speaking, as you look in Revelations, is a spiritual superpower and metaphor of the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness has a ruler of darkness, which is Lucifer. Lucifer attempted to overthrow heaven, so God kicked him out. So what happens is Lucifer or Satan fell to the earth, and as we go, without going into a lot of uh, theology on that, um, you understand that when God created humanity, Homo sapiens as we know it, as we live today, Satan has done his best to overthrow humanity because of his war against the Lord God. So what he does, he uses his spiritual forces that he learned and acquired while being a heavenly citizen and uses that deceptive 
spirit of trafficking and whatsoever he does to make darkness come against what God's most prized creation, which is humanity. Okay? So, the Lord speaks, and he tells me, and, he, and I study, Babylon comes from the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. That's where Babylon comes from. And so God says, look at Babel. Don't be presumptive. Babel, if you look at Genesis 6, I believe, is mm -hmm. Hebrew for the word Balaam. And Balao means to confuse or to confound. Babel means a confused noise made by a number of voices. Babel means clamor. Babel means uproar. Babel means to thwart. As I study further, Babel represented, quote unquote, a gate of God from the heavens to the earth. That's why they tried to build a tower reaching to heaven because they wanted to pierce the heavens to try to say that they could be gods themselves. It's, a, it's, a, it's an element of idolatry to come against the very creator. So, in essence, the mission, spiritually speaking of Babylon, not physically speaking, but spiritually speaking of Babylon, the mission of Babylon is to confuse and to confound and to thwart the truth of creation. To thwart God's holy nation and to permanently frustrate the descendants of the holy nation of God. I pray you are with me here. So let's look at Revelation 18 and let's bring more clarity of the basis of spiritual Babylon. Also known for the topic of this discussion, the kingdom of darkness. Okay? Revelations 18 verse 1 through 6. I'm going to read this from the Amplified, okay? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. Mm. Revelation 18, John the Revelator says, After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, possessing great authority, and the earth was lit, illuminated with his splendor and radiance. And he shouted with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen, certainly to be destroyed is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a dungeon haunted by every unclean spirit, and a prison for every unclean and loathsome bird. For all the nations have drunk from the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality and the kings and political leaders of the earth have committed immorality with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich by the wealth and economic power of her sensuous luxury. I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, so that you will not be a partner in her sins and receive her plagues. And receive her plagues. Oh my Jesus. For her sins, crimes, transgressions have piled up as high as heaven. And God has remembered her wickedness and crimes for judgment. Repay to her even as she's repaid others. And pay back to her double for her torment. In accordance to that she has done. In the cup of sin and suffering, would she mix a double portion of perfect justice for her? Okay, now, let's be clear. This is a spiritual allegory of the kingdom of darkness, not physical Babylon. Okay, the Lord said the kingdom of darkness has spiritually inspired a conglomerate of superpowers 
to war against and permanently imprison the holy nation of God and its descendants. The holy nation of God is in Africa. That's where it originated. What I find very, very, very intriguing is that we are in a global plague right now. Mm -hmm. Pandemic. And the continent of Africa is the least affected by this plague. Mm -hmm. And they can't figure out why. Mm -hmm. So when I say that God used Excuse me. The kingdom of darkness is basically suffering judgment from God. We cannot sit there and try to spiritualize goodness from a tool that has designed to destroy what God represents. Look at this. The thing that excited me about this message is that God used brown-skinned nations in his text through his prophet Isaiah to bring about reparations to release the bondage and imprisonment of the holy nation of Israel. God used African nations to bring reparations to the holy African nation for the imprisonment and dehumanization, okay? The prophet was showing, by Isaiah being a messianic prophet, he was showing the big picture, that the prophet was showing that an African savior was used to save the imprisoned and dehumanized citizens of the world. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ is the Savior that brings truth and righteousness and justice, and he sets people free. Amen. Listen, the confusion, the noise, the clamor, and the uproar of injustices of spiritual Babylon will are facing the truth in the storm that God has talked about that we are in. The Lord has spoken to me, said that he will use the re-education that brings about the truth about the foundations of Homo sapiens humanity as an allegory for saving the world. You can, you can look at genetics, you can look at studies. You know, they have a thing called Herto Man, which is like the earliest homo sapien they recognize. Uh, scientifically speaking, it is a black male. The reason why there is so much hatred for black humans is because the kingdom of darkness is against God's holy creation which is humanity. Humanity started in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. That is the birthplace of Homo sapien life. Mm -hmm. So the hatred for black humans is a hatred for the genesis of humanity. And that hatred is fueled by the kingdom of darkness and its tool called Babylon. The Lord said that those brown-skinned nations, the origin of humanity, is the investment resource that God is using, which are the architects and apostles of human life. Let's look at Egypt.
for one example, why God will use Egypt to help bring forth reparations. Mm -hmm. Prophets, uh, before I get into this, I'm going to say that Prophet Shantae and I, I, began, I was so excited about the message. I usually don't share much of it before I minister, but we got the sharing this morning because I just too, I couldn't hold it in. It was seeping out of my veins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I shared with Prophet Shante, and God began to speak to both of us. God has been dealing with her about virtually very similar things that he was sharing with me about in this study. And we weren't communicating with each other about what we were studying. Okay? So anyway, let's look at this. This is a combination with things God has shared with Prophet Shante and I. Egypt itself, why would God say Egypt as part of a reparations package? Egypt is not even called Egypt by the early inhabitants and the descendants. It's very similar to Japan. Japan is not called Japan by its descent in, in, uh, its inhabitants that are unbroken from its origination. Okay, Egyptians called their country Kemet. Kemet, or how do you say it? Mm -hmm. The land, it literally means black land. Kem meant black in ancient Egypt. The name Kem is derived from the color of the rich, fertile soil. So when we look at the region of where humanity, the birthplace of humanity has come from, northeast Africa, the soil was so rich and so dark and so black, and that's the area where God used to create humanity from. Mm -hmm. So the Lord began to speak to me that the miseducation of European nations and their plagiarism from black human nations, the foundation of the world, is something that God is unveiling. That's why in the dream he would have it to land at an HBCU. Let's look at one little piece of education. <laughs> Let's look at the, uh, something that is pretty much a foundation for all modern culture. It's chemistry. Prophet Shante and I, we've got to do this this morning. Chemistry itself comes from the word alchemy, which is European. But chemistry <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God. I'm like a little kid in the candy store. <laughs> chemistry comes from Kamiya, which is Egyptian. And it is the study of the principles of blacks. Mm -hmm. So the very component as a foundation of science, mm -hmm. biology and chemistry are the two foundational, bio, biology, chemistry, physics. Those are the, tri the trilogy of pretty much all human life and all the things we know, okay? Chemistry comes from the Coptic term chemia. What are the Coptics? Coptics are the unbroken or Christians from the time of Christ. Okay? So you look at chemistry or chemistry is the study of the principles of matter that ancient Egyptians understood. So when we talk about God using Egypt, Ethiopia, and Indonesia, which is Seba, as a place of resource for releasing people from their bondage, Egypt and Ethiopia are foundational. The knowledge that has come from those territories is foundational to all human life. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> so what happens is, when you look at history and study history, 
And I've talked about this before in other sermons and other studies and from our detailed studies. You look at Greco-Roman culture, exclusively the Renaissance period of Greco-Roman culture, is one of plagiarism and miseducation. The Renaissance period rated the knowledge of foundational humanity, that of Egypt, Ethiopia, Kemet, land of the blacks, fertile soil, and superimposed it as their own. That is a great miseducation. So if you look at this hatred factor of Europeans for Africans, is the hatred comes from those inspired by the kingdom of darkness. The ruler of darkness has a mission, has a threefold mission, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The ruler of darkness wants nothing more than to destroy the foundational humans that God has created for the continual function of humanity. Oh, there's so much to say in that. But let me say this. What time do we have? This message may not be very complimentary, but one thing God is doing is that in the dream, the hardware store was tools. It represents tools. Tools represents the greatest tool of humanity is education. Education comes from revelation by the Spirit of God into mankind. Education is the spirit releasing truth into the mind of the human about what he is and what he is about. So when you hide things in education, humanity is misinformed and sets itself on a trajectory of failure. So God is, is allowing a storm to occur so that the idols of miseducation mm -hmm. can be toppled and the tools of education represented by the hardware store and the dream can go and rebuild the earth, rebuild the foundation of humanity. The Lord spoke to me and says that in the dream, the white female represented there in the dream represents a world that escapes Babylonian, um, 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 what's the word, oppression. So the white female represents, you know, people who have been miseducated based on Eurocentric cultures. They come out of that culture, represent truth, seek truth, and support the empowerment of truth. That's why in a dream she was so supportive of the work that we were to do as the storm was over. There is no truth to enslaving humans. There is no truth in dehumanizing humans. There is no truth in getting filthy rich off the backs of God's true humanity. There is no truth, oh my God, there is no truth in spiritualizing supremacy of Eurocentric culture and identity. There is no truth, especially as we can see today, in hoarding 
institutions for the decimation of civil rights. The superpowers of the world, and particularly was uh, the nation that's represented as the super of superpowers, which is pretty much categorically false, because, quote unquote, the superpower of this, this world represented the land we live in now, I think it's like 27th on the educational ranking. So when God says that a storm is here, and then he's bringing about a re-education after the storm is over, and that he's bringing um, judgment to the rulers of darkness and the kingdom of darkness, so that truth can come forth, we can understand that no matter how deep the waters get, no matter how swampy the swamp is, mm -hmm. No matter how fiery all these fires representing across the country get, the Lord says that the foundational humanity will not be burned, will not be consumed. Israel, its truth of its makeup the truth of its descendants is something that God is ransoming. When you look at, as we said in the past, and we studied in the past, and we shown maps in the past, the kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem represents pretty much from where Jerusalem is all the way to the west coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. So when slavery was established through the papacy, the through, papacy being the papacy being the popes of the Roman Catholic Church decrees that went out. Mm -hmm. Papal bulls were decrees that went out in the 1400s to go and enslave and commodify the human beings of Africa. Mm -hmm. That was Roman rule, European rule saying that they are of God to go out and take these black humans and commodify them as your own. That is work of the kingdom of darkness. And God is allowing a storm to occur so that kingdom of darkness and its idols can be toppled. Praise Jesus. So I pray you got something out of this today. When you look at Jesus Christ, the work that he has done as an African savior, not as he wasn't Italian, he wasn't Scandinavian, he wasn't even American. So putting European figures as Jesus is miseducation and work of the kingdom of darkness. Christ is coming to bring truth into current society. So if you look at some studies, you can look at Jamar Tisby. He has a great book called The Color of Compromise and talks about the truth about the American church complicity to racism. Okay? We have White Too Long, which is the legacy of white supremacy in American Christianity. Western civilization has taken... Greco-Roman culture and use that culture to decimate and dehumanize God's true origin of humanity. And that is something the Western church cannot handle, Prophet. And so as we talk about Kemet being the land of the blacks and we talk about Kemetstry being the basically the, the study of the material world as learned and understood by the ancient blacks. That's really what chemistry is. We know that Christ was black. <laughs> he was an African savior. And so to be anti-black is to be anti-Christ. Anti you can't get past, get beyond, be, uh, you know, you can't get past that. Right. So you can't claim to be of Christ 
and be against black people. Amen. The humans that he's made in his image and likeness. likeness. So with that being said, we understand that the only way a lot of the miseducation that people take on as spiritual identity is actually work from the kingdom of darkness. And the only way the kingdom of darkness is going to be handled is by God bringing judgment to it. So all of these passionate embrace of Eurocentrism, which brings to the decimation of black humans because slavery, racism, all these things originated in the Western church. Mm-hmm. That's why America has an American pastoral pastors and American um, institutions that claim to be Christian have such a devil of a time. And I said that intentionally to embrace justice of black humans Mm -hmm. as a whole. So God said, don't look at what is happening. Look at the why is happening. The why of the, the, the push against supporting black humanity in its entirety and in its truth about its foundation to human life is because the kingdom of darkness just wants to oppress it. When you put out institutions that decimate black humans or, and reverse civil rights and to kill black humans at will with no type of um, truth in justice, um, you are working against the truth and the will of God. So in that, I'm going to have Prophet Shante pray because I don't want to pray all day on this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for the message on today. Thank you all for tuning uh-huh. in. Um, We know you'll probably have to come back and catch the replay and and listen again because there was lots of um, historical background that was given. But the main message out of it today is that God is allowing black and brown nations to be a ransom, to be a place of redemption for black and brown people all over the world. And we need to understand that we need to understand what's happening in this hour that it that it is a part of mm-hmm. biblical prophetic truth coming to pass mm-hmm. and that mystery babylon uh we know that we are living in mystery babylon mm-hmm. a lot of people say they don't understand um who babylon is mystery babylon is where we are now it is the unnamed babylon it's the systems of babylon mm-hmm. that is in current operation today oppressive yeah, is that spirit of oppression, um, that that spirit. And I want to go back real quick to something that Pastor said today as he was talking about Babylon and how it came from being um, a confusion or a clamor or an uproar and that it represented a gate of God. And I immediately thought about the fact that when something is Babylonian in nature, they were trying to build a tower Because they didn't want to go through the gate. They didn't want the access that God was providing. They wanted to build their own access Mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. And so you see that in operation that people, they don't want to follow the laws of God. They want to go around God to still access what the heavens give to us. Mm -hmm. And so that is the spirit of Babylon. It wants to be lawless. It wants to it wants to build its own access rather than going through the gate. Jesus said, I am the door. They don't want to go through the door. They will choose any other route but the door, the access point that God has given to us. So we have to understand that there is a spirit that seeks to overthrow humanity's connection, humanity's relationship with God and the divinity that God has given to us. As we access him, Mm -hmm. (laughs) people want divinity, but they don't want to access it through God. That's, that's, that's the whole spirit of Babylon. Right. And so, um, as we pray today, I want us to consider as a, as a person of God, as a human being that is submitted to the principles of Christ 
if there is anything within us, anything within us that is trying to align itself to the spirit of Babylon, anything within us that says, I want to do it outside of the way that God has designed. And as we go before God in prayer, um, I just want us to consider that. Consider ourselves today. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, Father, for the re-education that you're bringing to not just the body of believers, but also the re-education that you're bringing to the world about the importance of humanity, um, about the place of black and brown people in humanity, about um, the, the nature of and the origins and the foundations of this world that you've created through black and brown people. We thank you, Father, that you are clearing the way for that re-education to happen. You're clearing the way for truth, for, for wisdom, for understanding. You're clearing the way for justice. You're clearing the idols, God. You're removing the misalignment of humanity. You're removing, Father, all of the false teachings that has come um, to suppress black and brown people. We thank you, Father God, that you are dealing with the oppressor and the hand of the oppressor that has come against humanity. And Lord, we thank you for for looking over your people, the holy people that you have set apart for you. We thank you, Father God, for this word on today, God. And we know and we have learned, Father, that even to be anti-black is to be anti-Christ. We thank you, Father, for the spirit of truth, setting the minds of humanity free, not just the ones who believe in you, but the minds of humanity. Lord, those that have been misinformed, those that have been uh, miseducated, those that have been taught to view certain human beings as less than others. Father, that spirit of supremacy mm -hmm. that that cloaks itself as spirituality. We thank you, God, for casting those things down today. We thank you, Father God, for releasing people from every aspect of enslavement, every aspect of dehumanization. We thank you, Lord, for releasing your people from predators. We thank you, Father God, for even dealing with the hearts and minds of leaders, God, spiritual leaders, those that sit in spiritual rankings, even within the church. Lord, that the things that they have learned, the things that they have taught concerning black and brown people, Lord, that they would begin to speak the truth. Lord, that these leaders would begin to speak the truth of the word of God. They would speak the truth about Israel and those, Lord, that know about the, um, the scattering of Israel to the western coast of Africa and how they were taken into uh, slavery and how Israel, as the scripture said, that she would be taken to the to the furthest aisles mm -hmm. of the world that it wasn't just Israel left over in northeast Africa but that Israel began to be scattered all over the world and so father those who know the truth that they will begin to speak the truth and that uh even the miseducation that many Christians have been taught that Israel is simply the Europeans who are in the capital of Jerusalem right now God, that that lie would be dismantled. Mm. And Father, that the full truth about who Israel is, the Israel that you are restoring to the world, mm. the Israel that you are searching for now, the Israel that your Holy Spirit is calling out in its own restorative search and rescue. We thank you, God, for the truth of that, the truth of real Israel, the truth of extended Israel that's all over the world. In different parts of the world, we thank you, Lord, for the calling back of that Israel. We thank you, Father, for your great grace being upon your people. We thank you, Father God, that we will no longer be held captive by miseducation. We thank you, Father, that we will no longer be held captive by lies and by deceit. And we thank you, Father, that there is no power that's greater than yours. And we thank you, Lord, that every attempt to overthrow humanity will fail because we are created in your image. And you came for us. You died for us. You gave your life as a ransom for us. And so for this, we give your name thanks. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
those of you who can, we pray that you would uh, sow into Live Nation uh, through the uh, vehicles for giving that Prophet Chante has online as well through our PayPal and other things, Square, whatever. Um, we appreciate you and just understand when we minister things, we are here to minister the truth. We're not here to try to divide humanity. We're here to bring truth about humanity, which is a functional difference. Okay. We're not racist. We don't believe in one um, ethnicity over another because Christ said represented all cultures and, and, and ethnicities in heaven. It's just that we cannot start and say that we are ministering the holiness of God starting off with lies. That is what Christ wants to represent. And like I said, the last thing I will say to close out today is that Babel meaning confusion, Babylon meaning confusion. The, Satan is the author of confusion. And he uses his ministers, because he does have ministers, whose sole purpose is to confuse everybody. So when you see misinformation, confusion given on a national scale from national leaders and whatsoever, you know what spirit is operating. So take heed and let the Lord lead you not to be taken into the storm of confusion. Because that's what that storm is about. Okay? Bless God for you. Amen. And I encourage you to go back and watch the first two parts of this message. You can find it in on our Life Nation Reel. Just go to Life Nation Videos and you will see part one and part two. And you will get a better understanding of today's segment. Thank you all so much for your time and attention. Be blessed always.